Now what we're going to do, did we have any more questions? Are we good to go? Are we ready to build an aquarium? Yeah, let's go build an aquarium. So everybody in the audience today should have a kit. If you don't have your kit yet, you can still order one, get it later, come back and do the video again. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about what an aquarium is. Why would we want to have an aquarium? Why do we need them? Well, an aquarium is an artificial habitat. It's a habitat that we've created for fish and other aquatic creatures to live in. Now, <clears throat> why would you want to have an aquarium? Well, there's lots of different reasons. Probably the number one reason that people keep aquariums is for pets or as a hobby because they enjoy watching aquatic creatures and they like to keep them in their home where they can enjoy them. Uh, another reason would be education, and that would be the mission of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Monterey Bay Aquarium's primary goal is education and conservation. So one of the things that they do here is bring people up close and personal to see all kinds of uh, aquatic creatures that they wouldn't get to see otherwise because they're out there in the ocean and most people don't dive or swim where the aquatic creatures are. So you get to see them up close, learn about them, and then get to appreciate them because when we learn about the creatures, we, we come to care about them. And we tend to conserve and protect creatures that we care about. So that's one of the important education missions of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Another reason that people would keep aquariums is for research. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Scientists who want to observe a living thing throughout its entire life cycle will keep a creature in an aquarium where they can closely observe the entire life cycle. Now there's a few important points that I wanted to cover about having an aquarium before we actually put it together. Always make sure you do your research first. There are lots of different types of beautiful fish that you'll find at your local pet store, but they don't all get along. So it's very important to go to the store first. Look at all the different kinds of fish. And if there's some that interest you, write down their names and take them home. And then do a little bit of reading about them. Find out which ones can get along. Because if you get fish that are incompatible species, they can either eat each other or they may actually jump out of the aquarium, and that's not a good thing. So always make sure you check out what you're going to bring home first so that they're compatible with each other. The other thing that I recommend is that you always start with a freshwater tank. There are hobbyists who keep marine aquariums. Tropical marine aquariums are very beautiful. Later on, after we get the video posted, you'll see some segments we've taken of beautiful saltwater marine tanks with beautiful brightly colored fish that they have here at the aquarium in the splash zone. But those fish are very difficult to keep. The, uh, trying to maintain the water quality in a saltwater tank is very, very difficult. So if you're going to have an aquarium at home and you don't have a lot of experience, your best bet is to stick with fresh water. Those fish are a lot more robust. It's easier to get the water quality right. So fresh water is a good one to start with. You also want to remember not to release the fish into the wild. The fish um, that you find in the pet stores, a lot of them come from other parts of the world. They come from other habitats and other ecosystems that are foreign to our own. Now, if you introduce that fish, it may be bringing diseases or parasites on its body that fish in your backyard have never been exposed to, and it could end up wiping out an entire population. So if you decide that you've got this fish and you just don't have the time and energy to take care of it anymore, you need to either give it to a school or donate it to someone or give it away to a friend, but don't ever release them into the wild. That is not a good idea. So let's go ahead and get started on putting the aquarium together. You've got several pieces here. This, most obviously, is the tank that you're going to put the water in. Before you fill it up, the one thing that you need to remember is that this was manufactured in a manufacturing facility and there may be residues on here that would be harmful to your fish. So before you build the aquarium, you want to take the tank and anything that might be touching the water inside the tank and you want to rinse it. Don't use soap because soap is another residue that would be bad for your fish and you're not always sure you've rinsed all of it off. So make sure you rinse everything thoroughly in some good fresh clean water before you assemble your aquarium. Now when you want to set this up, find a spot to put it in because once you fill this with water it's pretty heavy and it can be kind of hard to carry it without spilling the water. So find a spot where the aquarium is going to live 
And make sure you keep it away from heat sources like open windows or windows that have exposure to a lot of sun during the day or heat, any kind of a heater, because there's not a lot of water in here. And you'll see that the water temperature could very quickly change if it's near a heat source. You want to make sure that the water temperature stays pretty constant so that your fish stays comfortable. So find a good spot for it, keep it set up, and then that's where you're going to set up the tank. There's another thing that I brought with me today that did not come with your aquarium kit, but when you go to the store to buy yourself a fish, you might want to pick one up, and that's a simple little aquarium thermometer. The aquarium thermometer just hangs over the side, and it allows you to monitor the temperature of the water inside of your tank. This little green stripe in here tells you what's an acceptable range for most tropical fish or fish that you would keep as pets. So that's something you might want to pick up in addition to all the things that came with the aquarium. Now, rinsing the rocks is something you do need to do. It seems like it would be kind of silly, but rinsing the rocks is another thing that we do to try and make sure that the water quality inside the tank is good for the fish. So what I've done is I've taken a bucket here, put my gravel in it and added a little water. We just put it in there and stir it up some, swish it around and rinse off those rocks, and then just pour off the water. You see it's actually kind of dirty. It's a little bit cloudy, so it wasn't perfectly clean rocks to begin with. We'll pour off most of that water. Get your hand in there, or you can get a fish net to try to catch the rocks as you pour it out. Another thing you might want to try is if you have a sieve with small enough holes, because this gravel's pretty small, you can put the rocks in the sieve and just rinse it under the faucet. That would be another way to clean them. Once you get them clean, pour your rocks in there. They're kind of sticky. Okay. There we go. Now, just shake that in there. And if you want to, when you get ambitious, you go to the pet store, you can maybe buy yourself some more decorative rocks. They have all different kinds of colors and sizes. You may want to find some. They have little glass marbles. Usually you want to get those from a pet store because those have been manufactured and, ha and processed in a facility that are not going to have hazardous or toxic substances on them that would be harmful to your fish. So get any additional decorations from a pet store. Make sure you rinse them off before you put them in the tank. Just spread your rocks out on the bottom. Now the instructions that came with your aquarium kit say at this point, you can separate your little plants and put them in the gravel. But I know from experience, having many aquariums, that if you put the rock, the plants in the rocks and then add the water, they're all going to float up to the top anyway. Okay, so let's get the aquarium going. I'm going to do this just for the sake of argument. You stick them in under the rocks. There you go. And then we'll add a little bit of water. I'm just going to use the water that I rinsed the rocks with so you can see. Thank you. Fill that up. You can use a pitcher, a juice pitcher, to continually just add your water until it fills up. Now this is a filter. This is going to clean the water in the tank, but it doesn't clean it all the time. You will have to take it out and clean the filter itself every once in a while. You just put it on the back. Actually, this is upside down. It says right here on the filter, if you look very carefully, it'll say top with an arrow pointing up. So this is how it's going to go upright. You've got a little piece of tubing that hooks in here. And then you want to get the other end of your tubing. Put it on there. Make sure it's sealed on tight because you don't want it to slip off. We're going to be forcing air through the tubing with a little device called an aquarium pump. Now I don't have enough water in here to be able to demonstrate this, but you put the other end of the tube on this little red attachment here. This is where the air gets pumped out of the pump. And then just plug it in. You'll hear it. There's no switch on it. But if you plug it in, you'll hear it turn on. It makes a little hum. And what that does is pump air through here and the uh, motion of the air will force the water through here and clean it through the filtration process. And once the tank's full of water, you'll see the bubbles coming off of there in the tank. Now, once you get this set up, you want to let it run for about 24 hours before you put a fish in here. 
So don't be in such a big rush to go get your fish. You want to set the tank up first and then go get your fish after you've done your homework and researched which ones you want to have. Now this is a very small aquarium. You can't put a lot of fish in here. So remember, the limit or the a good rule of thumb is about one inch per fish per gallon. This is about one gallon capacity. So you're limited to about one inch of fish. Now there's a lot of fish in the aquarium at the pet store that are going to be about that size. So you'll have a lot of choices, but I recommend that a good one to start with is probably a goldfish. And there's lots of different varieties of goldfish, even within that species. Here's your lid. This snaps on the top. There's also some available spaces on the top that you can punch through and thread your um, tubing through and then have the lid steal on there securely. This is a dust cover to keep dust from building up inside the aquarium. It also keeps cats out if you have any cats and if you have cats they will be curious about the fish. This lid is a little bit tricky I found. There's a little thumb catch on here you want to Squeeze it till it clicks and then it will open. Keep that closed and that also helps to keep the dust from accumulating in the water. You want the water to stay as clean as possible. And you can feed your fish through this little doorway in the lid. When you feed your fish, you want to do it about two or three times a day. And you're going to give them about the amount of food they can eat in three minutes. You'll get used to timing it. After a while, you'll know exactly how much your fish can eat. It doesn't take long to feed them, but make sure you don't overfeed them because if you believe extra food in the tank that can dirty the water even faster and it's very important to clean the tank you'll need to clean the tank even though it has a filter in there because the fish will poo in the water and the filter will get clogged so you can either take this out and completely replace this cartridge or just rinse it out good in some fresh water and put it back in but you do need to clean it out and change the water just scoop your fish out into a glass of water so that he gets undisturbed while you clean the tank, you know, and you can either lift it and pour some of the water out, but I would change at least half the water. Get a pitcher or a cup and scoop out half the water and then put some fresh water in. Now, if you live in a city, you're going to have chlorinated water, and it's very important that you monitor the chlorine levels of the fish water. So when you set up your aquarium before you introduce your fish, you can get water conditioners at the pet store and they will take the chlorine out of the water so that the chlorine levels are, are low enough that they're not going to harm your fish. That's another thing you want to check for. So that's your aquarium. Um, introduce your fish in another 24 hours and have lots of fun with your new aquarium.